Are you elite 3DS hacksaw? Well, guess what? You can make up to $20,000 hacking up your 3DS. Watch to find out how. Oh god, that was... <sighs> Hey, so what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, coming in with the infomercial type intro. And anyways, I am talking about this topic right here because I'd seen this, it cropped up a few days ago and a few people asked me what I thought of it. I felt like making a video about this. So for anyone who does not know, Nintendo is now going through the company Hacker One, and they are going to be paying people to submit, like find and submit exploits for the Nintendo 3DS, both the 3DS and the new 3DS through Hacker One through this vulnerability program. This is for both bugs, vulnerabilities, exploits, anything of the sort, and I'm going to link the page down below in the description so you all can check it out. I also find it really funny because they end up, I mean this is smart, they're showing some of the examples of what they want, and of course it's, you know, cheating, and it's also, you know, types of things that will let people play pirated games and such, and of course make unauthorized copies, all that other fun stuff. But right here, some of the vulnerabilities include privilege escalation on ARM11 user land, ARM11 kernel takeover, ARM9 user land takeover, and ARM9 kernel takeover does that does that sound familiar does that <laughs> I just I found that to be a bit funny that that was detailed there, but I understand why so first off is this a good idea? Is this a bad idea? Honestly, I think it's a good idea and some people might be wondering they're just like Mario You're 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 coming away from the dark side. You're you're going to legit honest here you're, you're not supporting homebrew anymore actually I, I am but I'm looking at this from two perspectives. I mean, first off, for people who want to modify their systems, open them up, uh, you know, run third-party code on them, unsigned code and all that fun stuff, th this isn't good news, and I understand that. However, Nintendo at the same time is also a company. A company's goal is to, of course, make money, turn a profit, and they really don't want people hacking up a closed source system. If they wanted people doing this, they would have made the 3DS open source, but alas, they didn't, it's closed source, so therefore, they want to prevent this from happening. So it's smart of this to happen because a lot of the people who develop these exploits, I mean, really almost all, if not all of them, do this out of love. They do it out of, you know, their spare time and they do it for free. At this point here, they're now saying, hey, you know that thing that you've been doing for free and providing the community for? Yeah, instead of releasing that exploit, how about you just give it to us? and we'll pay you money for it. Now this is nothing new. I know Sony, Microsoft have done this with their systems. I'm not too sure, but they've done it, you know, with their operating systems and such. Google has these things in place. Pretty much any big company that actually cares about their stuff ends up doing this. And we've seen positives and negatives come from it. Uh, now, one of the best positives I've seen is, of course, you know, the instant payouts, but also I know Geohot, for example, at one point, he was there. There was a bit of a challenge to end up rooting uh, one of the older Galaxy phones, like one of the, it wasn't a Note, but it was the uh, Galaxy S series, I, I remember. And uh, then he ended up creating Tower Root, which was a one-click root solution where you download Tower Root onto your phone, you hit root, it reboots the phone and your phone is rooted now instead of any companies coming after him or putting legal pressure on him Google hired him and they gave him his own team and they just ended up patching the tower root exploit because it actually did utilize an exploit in Android OS they ended up patching that in another revision of Android so that was fine because that was an exploit that needed to be patched that he used but he ended up getting hired and working with his own sector and his own team which was great this doesn't look like it's gonna get you employment anytime soon but if you are pretty skilled with this stuff with reverse engineering and you find a few things you might want to turn those exploits in and cash out a little bit. I mean, honestly, it seems like it is against the scene, and I understand it is, but I'm not the one finding these exploits and trying to, you know, utilize them. It is up to the people who are reverse engineering, and when it comes down to them, they're really going to have to take a conscious look at it and say, do I want to release this to the community for free, or do I want to get some payment on this? Because now they can actually get paid for their work. Now, do I believe this is going to deeply affect the 3DS homebrew community and all that stuff? I mean, 
it's questionable. I feel like it can because I feel like there are going to be a good amount of people, not everyone, but there's going to be a good amount of people that are going to be finding exploits either that they wanted to make public, that they're going to be submitting privately through this program to make money, or they're just not going to tell anyone and they're going to submit them through here. Uh, really, I mean, I understand they're completely incentivizing people and that is their job and that is technically the proper thing to do. I understand that they're just trying to make everything a lot more secure on there, uh, but I don't know how much it's going to slow down everything especially since this brings up one question which is why would they announce this and have this program so late into the 3DS's life cycle? I understand that the 3DS is still getting supported quite well, uh, not only with games, with software, with hardware, but on top of that with, you know, system updates and such. Whenever there is a new exploit that is found, Nintendo is somewhat quick to very quick to try and get the methods patched up now there are some things that just cannot be patched easily if at all and there are other things where most of the time they just try to break entry points to get into homebrew launcher and stuff because you just need that little entry point and then you can just eventually spread everything open but we got to realize that the 3ds here is well, it came out in 2011 and it's 2016 and so it's over five years old at this point it's going to be six years old here soon that's quite old for a handheld to be then investing in this type of program right here. Especially when the Wii U as well too. The Wii U is a year younger and it doesn't have any of this stuff. In fact, the funny thing is with that, it just it hasn't been getting any support. For anyone that doesn't know, the Wii U has gotten one firmware update this entire year. That's it, as I'm recording this, which is December 7th, 2016, it's gotten one firmware update, and that has been exploitable for most of the year. Now, to anybody that might be saying, oh, well, there's an update that's coming out, 5.6 is coming out, we're getting an update on the Wii U. Yeah, well, it's not out right now, it's not in production, it's still currently for developers, for testers and such, so it's for dev kits, that's still an internal build. And at this point in time as well, it's like, okay, so if it comes out before, 2017 we're going to get two updates for the Wii U in one year compared to how many updates we've gotten for the 3DS this year So that's the main thing that surprised me that this is coming out so late into this system's life cycle And some people are speculating maybe this is to gear up for the switch on that I'm not too sure it would make more sense if shortly after the switch came out They end up having a program like this which if that happens I wouldn't be all that surprised But we'll just have to wait until 2017 to check that out because, I mean, at this point as well, too, the Wii U is completely ripped open, the 3DS is ripped open as well, and when it comes to support, this is kind of how the 3DS is. Well, who keeps leaving this door open? What the hell, this damn door's open again, huh? Might as well close it. Alright, for fuck's sake, seriously, can we keep the door closed? This is what you do. The door's open, you close it like this. And it stays closed. I forgot I left my chips in here. And when it comes to official firmware support from Nintendo, as I mentioned with the one firmware update that came out this year, this is kind of how the Wii U is. Oh. This door should be open, shouldn't it? I guess it can, it can stay that way, that's cool. What the hell, this thing will not stay open. All right, you know what, let's, uh, let's fix that. Let's go ahead, take this thing right here, and we'll just prop the door open. There we go. Now it can. Now we got a nice airflow thing going on. Like whoosh. We got that. It's it's gonna be great. Now for my final thoughts on this. What this reminds me of is kind of what's happened with the whole iOS scene. Now iOS. I was into that very early on. I'd say like I got in like on version three one two something like that. And I was you know jailbreaking iPods, iPhones, unlocking them, all that fun stuff. And back then it was expected where when a firmware came out shortly after a jailbreak would come out, and then right after that a unlock method would come out. And over the past few years it's just taken longer and longer and longer for these updates to come out and for these jailbreaks to come out and that's been kind of contributed to with a few different things one of them is a lot of the developers are just not working on these things uh, there's not as much sharing going on as well too another thing is just kind of loss of interest in it a lot of these developers have really and it should not really work on them as much they've just kind of moved on to other projects or they got busy or they just left the reverse engineering scene whatever it was the third thing is bug bounties these things pay. Apple, for example, does pay good money. I don't know the details of it, but I've been told they do pay good money when it comes to vulnerabilities. And if somebody can find a jailbreak type vulnerability 
and they sell it to Apple instead of releasing it for free or giving it to the proper developers that would fully utilize that to have a one-click jailbreak type solution or even a two-click thing, whatever it is, then a lot of people are taking that cash out and then therefore that is getting patched up in firmwares, getting pushed out. It's getting to the point now where not only so many exploits have been closed up because iOS is so old at this point, but also a lot of people are kind of questioning, do I want to release this for free or do I want to make money off of it? Let's see what's going on. And that's kind of the same thing with the 3DS as well too. I'm not saying that there's no more exploits to be found, but with the system firmware being so old at this point, a lot of exploits have been patched up already. There's going to be more to come, but now people, again, are going to make that decision where it's like, do I want to release this to the right people or do I want to make money off of it? Anyways, if you have any thoughts, opinions, or you want to rant about it, let me know down below in the comment section. I do look forward to reading your comments. If you enjoyed this video, a like would be very much appreciated. If you absolutely hated it, because I don't know, you hate bug bounty programs and all that stuff, a dislike is fine as well too. Anyways, Hopefully you all enjoyed this video. Hopefully you all have something to say about this. And again, all the reading stuff will be down below in the description. I'm going to go play The Last Guardian, and I'm also a little hungry. Anyways, I'll talk to you all later.